Hello everyone, welcome back. Thanks for visiting once again. So this is TSR2. On the 27th of September 1964, this aircraft took to the air for the first time at Boscombe Down in Wiltshire. The weather was cloudy, it was windy, but otherwise flying conditions were fairly good. At the controls was Roland Beaumont and behind him sat uh, Don Bowen as his observer. The flight lasted approximately 15 minutes, um, slightly less in fact than 15 minutes, and uh, at the end of it, uh, the pilot and observer were met with severe vibration on landing from the undercarriage. That undercarriage problem was later pretty much cured before the end of the flight testing programme, uh, which was curtailed uh, after flight 25, which was some eight or so months after the initial maiden flight. As it stands, TSR2 during that period became something of a legend, really, more of a myth, really. And argument has persisted from that time, which is 1965, to this, as to whether indeed this aircraft might have been the winner that Roland Beaumont thought it would be. In any event, uh, much speculation has abounded. Many programmes, many pieces of uh, written work um, are on the, uh, on the market and available to you, um, including the, the tome that I've used as my reference manual for this build. Uh, which is called TSR2, Britain's Lost Bomber, and it's by a gentleman called Damien Burke. It's highly detailed, uh, and it's full of all sorts of useful information and photographs that many people won't see uh, in, the, in the view of public. However, um, the job is nearly completed. All I have to do now is to put the canopies on, as you will remember. I've uh, completed the canopies and detailed them inside. They just have to be put on. They're going to be put on in the open position. And as you may recall, the instructions don't allow for an open position canopy. But uh, I've made some modifications and that should allow us to do just that. So let's get down to the bit of work involved in doing that. I'm going to super glue those canopy, um, uh, canopy legs on. Um, I'm going to use some, some glue here. I'm just going to do that for you now. Um, and if I can find a suitable poker to do that with, then I will get straight to it. There is my super glue dibber. So here we go. As you can see, um, we're just about ready to do the job. So I'll just dab a super glue there. And dab there. And then carefully place, oh, hang on a minute, there's a bit of, there we go, I've got a little bit of glue over the top of the, over the top of the, um, over the top of the canopy there, so this should stick fairly quickly and then hold itself up, I hope, it says here, Yes, it's beginning to become tacky already. And there we are. We'll do the same thing with the front canopy as well. And hopefully get those squared away too. A bit of silent time whilst I concentrate on making sure these go in properly because once they're on they'll be difficult to take off without the uh, debonder and uh, I'm sure that you will all remember the saga of the debonder on the uh, on the nose cone oh no that's not gone on properly has it so there we go and just hold that gently there for a minute I'm just about there now. I can feel this beginning to go a little tacky now. And there we go. So, 
The aircraft that you're looking at is, of course, XR219, which was the only one to fly. The flight test programme was about 2,000 hours long, but there were a total of nine aircraft designs scheduled for the flight test programme. Um, and they were designed, I believe, in terms of um, the flight test programme to fly during the day and be serviced at night. Um, the, the rest of this really is about the model and how easily it went together, were there any problems, and quite frankly that's not going to take very long because this was a really easy build. Airfix outdid themselves with this model um, in all sorts of ways. The seam lines are very minimal um, and for example in the case of the seam lines between the upper and lower fuselages Airfix employed areas where there were already seam lines visible on the aircraft itself in the same way as at the top of the aircraft here this panel here is glued in after the fuselage halves are put together and the only seam line that you've got to deal with is up to this point here the aircraft wings themselves have no seam lines in them at all and sit over the top of the fuselage. There's a further panel down behind here which covers up seam lines there as well. So what you clue up with is really very little work to do in order to, um, to put this aircraft into the sort of condition that you see here. Um, in terms of upgrades, I've used the Wolfpack upgrade which includes the nose cone and pito head. Um, I've added a pitot head here to the um, starboard side of the, um, the driver, the pilot's seat. These are the windscreen clearing vents here. Um, these two pitot heads are not modelled but shown in videos and films that you can see as are the pitot's head. There's one on the port side here and another corresponding one on the starboard side. I've modelled the uh, auxiliary air intakes in the open position and that's a fairly straightforward job to do. Uh, albeit requiring a little bit of patience. The labyrinth vents here I've painted black and then white underneath to give some additional interest and I've modelled the, uh, the leaves for the air brakes slightly open. You'll see that there's a the, the pointer contacts there that's because it's not smooth at all. So these are slightly open because there was a problem with the uh, the jacks that pulled the leaves open um, in terms of synchronising the upper and the lower leaves. So they were either fully locked shut for high speed flying or they were left slightly cracked open like this. Um, there's an upgrade into the tailpipes which adds considerable more detail and also the undercarriage is the, um, I forget the name of the manufacturer but it's um, a metal um, undercarriage um, onto which you put the original wheels. I've also used some resin wheels for the main bogies as well. I've added in further detail underneath on the undercarriage of the um, hydraulic pipe work and so on. And also the at the back here, you can probably just about make this out, which is the um, what's called Aylesbury strut, which hangs down from the rear top side of the undercarriage oleo leg right down and then secures to the bogey at the back. This was designed to stop vibration of the undercarriage on landing um, and also had the dual purpose of putting the undercarriage into the correct position so that landing would be smooth. So there's a few upgrades to this that I've done um, but uh, this will be the last video that I do of TSR2. Um, I shall put it into a uh, presentation case um, and um, I will be enjoying looking at it. The project's taken about a year for me um, modelling irregularly um, I want to say a very big thank you to everybody who's followed this from the beginning and I know that there have been some that have done this. I hope that the work that I have done here has given you um, enough information to help you avoid, well, virtually no pitfalls at all, but perhaps to add a little bit of extra detail of your own. As you research, you may very well find, as I have done, that there's additional details that you could put in. Um, and. Um, the only thing to remember is that 219 didn't have the cameras that uh, sit here um, and gaze backwards um, and so you'll need to take those out and obviously as you can see I've depicted XR219 here. So look, 
everybody thank you very much for taking the time to watch i'm very much obliged to you thank you for subscribing thank you for giving me your comments and your feedback and um i hope that this has been interesting for you i'm going to call it a day now so we won't be talking about tsr2 again unless of course you want to uh, and i shall be moving on to another project i don't quite know what that is yet but um I shall put out a video when that comes along and I hope that this has been um, an adventure for you as it was for me. Many thanks indeed for your time and I look forward to seeing you another time. Take care now. Bye bye.